It's not often that a government minister resigns to spend more time with his car, but entrepreneur Lord Drayson recently did just that, to follow his dream of creating a successful green motor racing team. I am um, trained as an engineer. My degree was a uh, production engineering degree at Aston University. And then I went into business as a uh, science entrepreneur, and I've had a love of cars through and through my whole life. So just now focusing on making as big a success as I can over the next three years of our green racing campaign. Inspired by a conversation with his children about climate change, Lord Drayson worked with Barwell Motorsport and ProDrive to develop a bioethanol fueled Aston Martin for the British GT Championship. It was very pioneering because no one else had done it in sports car racing. It's a bit of a risk to try it. Well, the first thing really was finding out the facts about bioethanol. A lot of rumour, um, the most probably spectacular one, was people telling us that it burnt with an invisible flame, which as a driver, you think, well, that's a bit freaky, don't quite like the sound of that. We found it wasn't true. It burns with a blue flame and you can see it, so there are no real safety concerns. You can deal with them. From an engineering standpoint, the molecule of bioethanol is a longer carbon chain than petrol, so therefore you get more power, more energy out of the combustion. But the consumption isn't as good. So you have to make changes in terms of the fuel system, um, larger fuel system, um, bigger delivery, remap the engine, change the compression ratio. Then it's about the fact that bioethanol, although it's a very nice material, it's non-toxic, you know, you can t t put your fingers in it and touch it, and it doesn't do you any harm, but it does react with aluminium. So you have to make sure that it's not coming into contact with any aluminium surfaces within the engine. All perfectly doable from an engineering standpoint. And that was reflected in, in the fact that the car came out of the box, worked first time, put it on pole, started winning races right from the beginning of the season, and it ran faultlessly all season. We did not have a single problem with the, the bioengineering aspects of the car. Within just five races, the Aston DBRS9 had notched an historic first win for a biofuel car. I think the, big, the biggest compliment people paid us when we started winning races, they put it down to the bioethanol. It's an equalised series, so you're not allowed to have a power advantage, so you have to carry a restriction in the, in the car. What we've seen in the past, that people who'd gone green hadn't been winning. What we've done is shown that you can win, that you can have high performance, but you can also be green. And when people started saying, Crikey, this bioethanol you know, is faster, I would say to them, well, get yourself some then, you know. If you just said to me at the beginning of the season, with the new bioethanol fuel car, we come second in the championship, I wouldn't have believed you. So it was a, a really dream result. Put us in a great position to now take it internationally. So next year we're going to the American Le Mans series. The first time they're allowing bio cars, so we're the first people to sign up for that. We're now developing the car and uh, really looking forward to racing in America next year, showing um, you know, British motorsport technology at the cutting edge, high performance and environmentally friendly at the same time. Providing we can win, then I think we'll inspire people. Most sports about winning. If we can show we can develop a really well-engineered car that looks great, sounds great, and I think you agree, the Aston really does tick all those boxes, and go out there and really start to win some, some races, then people go, well, this buyer thing is really good. Let's, let's look at it further. Lord Drayson is hoping that success with his biofueled Aston can promote further innovation in British engineering. We're also looking at other green energy efficient technologies so and we're interested in hearing from people who have got ideas um, maybe working on uh, aspects relating to regenerative braking other types of of ways of, of using technology to be more energy efficient because I believe as an engineer and as someone who's been a science entrepreneur my whole life there's a real opportunity to show in motorsport the way to go in the use of technology to address the problems of climate change. I mean, climate change we know now is a reality. We, the data's there to prove it. And I can, you know, see a future whereby you'd have some sports car endurance races and some will be electric cars, some will be hybrid cars, some will be running on a biofuel, and that'll make it really interesting. And that level, that spurs innovation, which then um, creates business opportunities for people engaged in automotive technology development in the motorsport industry. Of course, Britain is the world leader in, in motorsport technology, and it's very important, therefore, I think, that Britain is also the leader in green motorsport technology. So this whole energy-efficient programme is very important to keep us at the, the real cutting edge of what it's going to be a much more important aspect to racing technology in the future.